Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Hail Mocha Level. And right now, if you'd like to read about Rise and Shine, have Esso, please go right ahead. But I remember the last time I did this with a full reformer spam that we went with a B A. We went with the top option here, so let's try something different. And the students, we'll go with them. As without them, there will be no popular support to continue protesting. And if you'd like to read about cartel gazettes, please go right ahead. What have I gotten myself into? Oh boy, because right now we can deal with the Zolverine. And we have a lot of indentured workers without any pay or hope of freedom, but that's okay. What are we going to do here? Seize corporate assets would probably be quite delightful. But, Siemens, Dalma Bands, Reichswerke, Aji Farben, uh, where is the least amount? It's probably in the very far regions over here. Hmm. Brauschitz, you don't want to forget about that one too. Cool. Alright, not too bad. Uh, let's, uh, you know what, we'll do Siemens first, because probably that's probably the easiest one, right? And thank you, and we're out of that stuff. Uh, the less dudes that there are here, the easier we can use this stuff, right? Right? I don't know, we'll see what happens. It doesn't really matter to me too much right now. Because I want to see what we can do when we go full 100% conservative. Which probably is a really bad idea, and I forgot to do this one. So if you want to do about this one, please go right ahead. But we do have some comments to go through as well. Uh, such as, uh, there is a centrist route available, the dangest route, as many would like to say. For Speer, even though we are going quite conservative for this route. Sorry, I dropped my pan on the ground. And right now we have 55 PP. We were able to get Hungary into the Einheit's pack, so that's pretty good. We have Bulgaria here too. And right now we're doing the Romanians next. So we'll see what happens. But we're also far doing okay. We're at 10, they're at 8. They've won once already, which is unfortunate, but whatever. And uh, regime stability is looking okay, not bad. 98% is pretty good, right? And of course, the Pacific War is still going on. It doesn't look good for free Indonesia, but we'll see. We'll definitely see. Um, yeah, hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Another comment. Let's see. Someone... Oh, Sukarno has prevailed. Oh, that really sucks for us, but not a thing we can really do. Narrow avenues. Oh, there's no greater danger than underestimating your opponent. Well, you may see. In the world of espionage, there are a few moral concerns. Compassion, friendship, even humanity must sometimes be forgotten. So many young spies had their careers, and sometimes their lives ended because they underestimated a seemingly weak enemy. Gerhard Vessel knew it well, and that was why he was still in his office well into the night. Looking at the files concerning students, they were barely older than boys, one of them didn't even have a beard. And yet each and every one of them had enough power to change their Reich forever. While Galen knew the Reich needed some change to survive into this new age, their kind of change would only bring chaos and infighting. There's no greater danger than under Underestimating your opponent. That is true. But then again, underestimating him is a bad thing to do, but also be careful of your own mistakes. You know, I, you know that's something I guess I could learn as well. Be careful of your own mistakes. Don't make mistakes as best as you possibly can. Just just life advice. Just life advice. But what do I know? I'm just a guy on the internet, right? Uh, 13 billion in annual deficit. That's looking a little better than it was before. Sukano has won. We need a lot of command power. But after Core of Arms, uh, what does what this one do? Is this one good? Uh, much to give. Regime stability will drop little, little to gain. Um, Council of the Lords. Current machines. Yeah, so we'll do that one next. If you like to about this, we'll please go ahead. Because we want to do as much, or put as much effort into destroying or removing the power of these mega corporations, even though we're going quite conservative. Waffen Gigant. Well, if you want to about that, please go ahead. Stains must be cleansed. Actually, do we even need any more? Oh, oh very nice. Thank you. Um, any more regime? Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, well, whatever. Whatever. Cool. I'm just keep looking for here for more stability. Anything else we really do need? Um, no, not really. Pacific War is done and over with, so that's disappointing that we lost, but I think that happened too in the, when I played as reformers. It's, doing free Indonesia is very difficult. I played as in Indonesia before. The normal Indonesian route, or, you know, normal Indonesia, pretty easy. Actually, it's pretty darn easy to play in Winism. Free Indonesia, that's not easy. I, I don't know if I really would recommend it yet, but if, if you want a challenge, try it out. And if you've played it before, Free Indonesia, let me know in the comments if you found it easy or difficult, because I found it personally pretty difficult to play as, so. Uh, let's go over here, and obviously, if we can't get Romania on our side here, I'm just going to do it off screen anyway, so. We'll see. We shall see and have a good time. Hopefully. Uh, why not? Who cares? Go and do that stuff. That's fine with us. Uh, we have 26 uh, command power. Not bad. And this one. Uneasy ally, not bad. Ooh, civilian factory construction speed, international competitor. Please go ahead if you like it about that. Another comment. Someone says, you will lose societal alignment if you go full conservative. Um, that actually doesn't sound very good for us. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. You know, I guess we'll see. Since we're trying to reform anyways, but going guess full conservative is probably a really bad idea. 
But I guess we'll see. If you like, ooh, ooh, a little opposition. Well, well, if you're wondering about this, please go ahead. All right. A simple matter of time. Oh, okay. So if you wonder, this is this this is forced to happen any single, every single time as well, because Ireland is forced to join us. Which, if you're playing Ireland and you don't want them to join, oh, that's too bad. Oh, look, no one's here. Oh, no PP. Oh, gosh, darn it. We have a command power, but not enough PP. Strong the machine in. They will be judged just like the rest. Nice. Anything else? Hey, look at that. That's really nice. Good, good. We actually went from... we. There was like a what? A 20-some percent chance-ish? Roughly that? One to six. The one I chose was one... You get one score all the way up to six. And we got six. Words which govern life and death. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I remember about this one. Um, if you like to read about this one, please go right ahead. I remember this one. I will inquire about it. It's basically talking about the... Uh, the history behind a particular individual who's background we might not like to look at. A shame it took so long, I'm glad to have you, however. Something's best layered in the past. I will inquire about it, Herr Grabner. We must be thorough. For better or for worse. I'd love to you know, you know, charge tra traitors with treason, but not right now. Marines are nice. They're nice. Got some of that too. And let's come over here and actually, you know what? What if we were to wait a few days? Because I do want to get rid of this. And we get, without doing that, three a day. So we should be okay doing anti-thrust directive. Words which can cover good and ill. Actually, this one. I can do this one first. Oh. Can we do that one? One month cooldown. That's weird that we can't do that one. There you go. Do that. Uh, that's very odd, but okay. Philip Blazik must know his past. I've already sold my hands with blood. I must leave him. No, 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 no. We're okay. This is weird. All right, well, whatever. There's no no dudes here, so that looks looks pretty good, right? If there's uh, how many dudes are here? There's quite a few dudes there. There's no dudes there. That's fine. Do that. How many dudes are here? There's no dudes here either. Zero percent is very nice. Um, there's a lot of dudes all over here, which is unfortunate, but oh well. All right, and if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Boom. Nice. Get it done immediately. Council of the gods. Very good. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So, actually, let's keep an eye on this. So, we'll do this stuff, of course. Words which covet regret und sorrow. A tragic day. Truly tragic. Um, 98%. So, we should keep an eye if it actually does go down. I have doomed yet another. 98.3. So, 98.3. Let's keep that in the back of our minds right now. Oh, it is going down. Well, that sucks. Well, that's going to be a rough campaign then. Oh, look at that. We still won, regardless. So, it's going to be rough, but we'll see how far we can go. I mean, we still have our other abilities to keep our regime stability by using, you know, the agent, intelligi intelligence agency, if I could speak correctly. Words which cannot be taken back, of course. Are you there? Oh, man. Like, I've already read this through else before, but, like, it's kind of sad that this has to happen the way it is, but it's unfortunate it had to come to that. Help from the outside. Very cool. Oh, this is about uh, Operation Condor when we sent uh, our agents to help out in Alberia. That's a little bit too early for us. 58% is not very good. Of course. So because regime stability is now going to go down, 96.9. If you don't believe me, well, sometimes you shouldn't, I guess. Uh, we'll keep it on it. 96.9. 96.9 is where it's at. So we won't use this one yet. And we'll kind of watch it go down. Go figure. Cool. Ah, very good. You know what? Oh, we can't do that one yet. Darn. Actually, there are no dudes here, so... There you go. Zero percent. Very good. Now we're just out of PP, which isn't very good either. But, Conglomerate of Steel. There we go. And there he goes. well. Also, there was another comment saying that uh, someone says, I have no idea what I'm doing with going very conservative spell. You're not exactly wrong. <laughs> That's why I'm literally playing this, because I want to know what happens if you try to go as conservative as possible. 96.9 is now still the same. Council of Gods, one that must be stopped. How are we here? Still good. We have about uh, a little more than a week left, so we can kind of ignore that. 96.9. And the Pacific War, we can't really do much. We can still bribe political enemies, which would be very nice to do, so which we will. See, it is going down slowly, which isn't very good, but hey, it is what it is. Fighting against people, not very good. So obviously, if it doesn't go well, 
I'm going to show you as many focuses and as many events as possible. And then I'll go back to an earlier save and try to do, uh, go back to the point where we are quite in the middle of this. Because I have like, I literally have like at least 20 saves for spare so far. So I will go back to a save where we have regime alignment right in the middle, just in case we need to do so. So don't worry, don't be worried. I'm going to see, I want to see how much we can fight this. I really am interested in seeing how much we can fight that. So cool, that one's done already, which is great. Over here, thank you. Brashichtat is a place we all want to be. And very nice. Still can't do that over there. All right. Um, where are there not a lot of groups here? Oh, yeah. Over here. But we'll get there eventually. Cool. But really, I I mean, I'm doing all these spare routes because I want to know as much as I can about this. So if anyone asks me in the future, I'll know. Like, I, I will literally know. So uh, that'll be good. Mm, 3 to 4, 3 to 4, 3 to 4. Mm, let's do 3 to 4. Let's go big. Um, uh, we'll save this one for later. We need to keep some PPU for now. So when things really start falling apart, we're, we're going to fall apart very hard. <laughs> ah, gotta love it. Conglomerate of steel. Much to give. Regime stability goes down. Oh, no. Stahl... Stahl... Uh, Frankenstein. Goring was a fool, but a useful one. Yes. Oh, propaganda campaign. Oh, that is not good. So we don't do anything here. What what happens? Oh. Oh. 96.6. Um, We're going to wait to do more stuff. I want to get all the political power... Is it really worth doing this at this point? Because it already leans strongly conservative. We get more political power, social outlook. Eh. Yeah, it's probably really bad to do it like this. Oh well. I just want to see what happens. I want to see how, how hard we can fight this. And... Is that a dumb idea? You bet it is, but the magic of doing things off-screen does sometimes benefit us. Or at least benefit me. Okay, so we need two. Up to two. Two to four, two to four, one to three, one to three. Alright, we'll try that. Actually, maybe we should not have tried that. Actually, we should have tried that. Darn, they went bust. If I didn't do anything there, we could have... I mean, if we have a 66% chance to do well, a 33% chance to fail here. Oh, and we still... I need to do a focus. Eh, whatever. Um, there we go. Little bit of game. All right, money to gain. Oh, the conservative side. So if you want to do about this one, please go right ahead. As well as partial privatization, go right ahead. But the money to gain with the close ties to the state bureaucracy. Raxvaka will already have caught wind of our plans for them. This is going to make dealing with them a lot more difficult than I hope, since they're no doubt hurrying to burn documents, cover their tracks, and relocate their assets out of our reach. We have to go in hard and fast if we want Gadlinburg's empire dismantled and scattered to the winds before he can salvage his wealth. We should take advantage of the control we already have over the Reichsvaka. With the clout of a Fuhrer directive, the dissolution of the cartel into its constituent corporations can begin immediately. We have no way to no PP too, but whatever. They're a different kind of shutdown. If you want to hear about that, please go ahead. Understood, soldier. Take the rest and... Take up the rest and staff the facility for the night. All right, over here. Oh, we still can't do anything here. Huh? And Decker satellites, very good. Um, let's go and start cutting them down a little bit more as well. There are no slaves over here, but we can't do this one. What is that? Zero percent. Well, they're at zero percent. Is that bugged? I don't know. Thank you. Eight point seven, looking not too bad, really. Really, not too bad. So, but after this one, money to gain, mass privatization. Our slash and burn approach is working like a charm, just as I predicted. Reichsvecker never saw us coming. Gallenberg has reportedly been thrown into a spin by a rapid and uncompromising attack, offering no resistance to the brutal dismemberment of his enterprise. Krupp, Rheinmetall, and dozens more corporations are once again free and in the hands of responsible businessmen, who can be trusted not to seek a monopoly or abuse the responsibility to grant it to them, unfortunately. The redistribution of assets means that some of the corporations spat out by Reichswerke are still in possession of slaves. I'm more than a little concerned, but hopefully any further abuses can be prevented with careful monitoring of the situation and the continuation of the Reichs, uh, the Rückführungsprogramm. I just hope the new bosses have more moral fiber than Gallenberg does. We will see. Hey! Oh, wow, we got lucky. Ten. Well, we won for Romania. Very nice. Anything else? Yes, yes. Man, when things come crashing down, it's probably not going to be too good for us, but that is a okay. 
Uh, sure, why not? We give more research speed, counterintelligence, intel network, gain strength factor. Why not? Does it cost us very much? No. 95.5, that's pretty nice. Cool. Anybody read about flies, please go right ahead. In which we have no PP. I hate having no PP. Alright, but anyways, we can close out of this one so we don't have to see it anymore. Thank you very much. Now we'll get a total of 2.35. Oh, that's not enough. After Flice, cities of a thousand fires. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead and I will scroll down just for you right now. Whee! Oh, civilian budget boost. No, 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 no. We need that budget boost right now. Thank you. Cut. Because we need as much PP as possible. Alright, not bad. 95.5. Romania, South of Germany. You bet they do. Accidents or sabotage. If you like to about that, please go right ahead. They're only making hard on themselves. Oh boy. Cool. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So now we have a reformist tick and overwhelmingly conservative pivot. Peace has been brought to Vietnam. Cool. Thank you. Now they're gone. Always need more PP. Uh, let's get rid of Siemens as fast as possible. So we'll do there, and then we'll probably do that one too. Public accusations. Oh boy. Yeah, uh, how many slaves do they got? Eh, they got too many for me to really choose that top one. If you want to do public accusations... Uh, oh, did I ever read this one before? Well, you know what, let's see. Just when the Reich had finally reached an ke even keel after the devastating civil war and the subsequent aftermath, something new comes to rock the boat. Lately, a large number of conservative voices in the Reich have had their names smeared or past secrets dredged to the surface by unknown perpetrators. Small town mayors, minor party officials, government bureaucrats, local military heroes, and many others had had a deluge of criminal charges thrown at them in unobstantiated pamphlets and words of mouth. Scandalous stories of corruption, charges of fraud, even accusations of murder are running rampant through the populace. Even more concerning isn't the popular opinion, but those that the salacious rumors are targeting lower level national socialist functionaries that are best war wary of Speer's reforms and at worst actively opposed to them. How many of these rumors and accusations are true is unknown. Some most likely are, though many more will have been fabricated whole cloth, but it will be difficult to disprove nonetheless. On one hand, this can be hopefully hopeful to get some reforms passed if our reactionary opponents are so busy defending themselves in the court of public opinion. They won't have the time or energy to stop these that want the refor to reform the Reich. On the other hand, the fact that we cannot find the source of these rumors means we should be wary. Our unseen allies in re of reform today can become our worst enemies tomorrow. They can't all be true. Can they? Or can they not? Yeah, we didn't like political power here, apparently. There you go. Cities of a Thousand Fires followed up with a new German worker. Debt will rise. That's fine. Traditional roles. Student Bewegungsbericht. Oh, look at that. A uh, vessel look at the three folders in front of him, each a danger in his own right, and yet a choice had to be made. With little time and little means, he couldn't follow all trials and narrow avenues one must squeeze to get past obstacles and risk getting stuck. With a sigh, he looked once more at the papers concerning the three suspected leaders of the student movement. Hans Jürgen Kral, a philosophy student and black market leader with his contacts in America, he efficiently smuggled large quantities of forbidden literature in Germany with a pre preference for social leading philosophers. Rudi Deutsch, a charismatic orator, while less prone to open rebellion, he was still extremely dangerous as he expressed his desire to subvert Germany by embedding sleeper agents inside the government. Sigrid Ruger, well-known feminist and socialist agitator, extremely charismatic, she already had organized massive student rallies and protests, often challenging the police and gathering even more supporters with time. So much danger, so little time. Vessel was frustrated by his inability to pursue all roads, but it was time to act without a sliver of indecisiveness. He focused his efforts on... The bookworm? Deutsche Infiltrator. Ruger the Firebrand. Hmm. Black Market Leader. Well, from America. Hmm. Sleeper Agents Inside the Reich. Oh, Ruger. Feminist and Socialist Agitator. Extremely Charismatic. Probably the Firebrand. There will be no strong feminist movement here in our Germany. The Firebrand, a Berest A, Agent New and Alten, Siegfried, Siegfried Ruger, codenamed Firebrand, is one of the few female leaders of the student movement. A fact that stands as a testament of her charisma and ability to lead, thanks to her ability to manipulate her fellow students. She can organize massive rallies to push forward her ideas, as expected from a feminist. She advocates for extended rights for women, up to full equality between genders, among many other things. Berest B, Agent Bergerlisch's Gazette und Buch. 
Update on Berest A. And analyzing the data concerning the rallies organized and led by Firebrand, one thing stands out. Unlike her comrades, a suspect constantly pushes an outrageously large agenda, ranging from the aforementioned women's rights to the democratization of abolition of slavery, resignation of the fear, tax reductions, free schooling, just to name a few. Far from the ravings of a lunatic, this seems to be the precise strategy, while the others try to present demands that the government could abstractly keep into consideration. Firebrand knows that her requests are so extreme that no one will ever be able to accept them, and uses refusal as fuel to attract more followers. Volschlag, curtail Firebrand's followers, prevent other rallies, arrest Firebrand, we'll treat her as a man if that's what she wants. She wants to be treated as, as a dude. And we'll give her the dude treatment. Alright. Alrighty-tighty. Very good. You know... I was watching the other day, when, at the time I was recording, um, Alex Rambler. I would love to see him play Germany. I would love to see him play Germany. <laughs> oh man, that, that'd be a lot of fun. Like, I usually watch, not all of them, but quite a few of Alex Rambler's videos, so. I don't know. I, I just, for some reason, I thought that'd be kind of cool if he would actually play, uh, uh, TNL. But if you like to about the land of diligence, please go ahead. Yeah, we're going to lose more political power. It is what it is. Uh, it is what it is, you know. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, because we'll get some more political power later on anyway, so. Uh, let's do uh, Vice Side. Actually, I should have done this one earlier, but I'm like, I already showed you this one, so. And we do want to improve this, the, the benefits of the skilled workforce. Thank you very much. Cool. Alright, what else is here? Alright, it's at 96%. Not bad, not bad. I'm not too worried about that right now. The Conjurator Packet. Oh, that'd be so good to do. Yes, we want to get that done as fast as possible. Let's save our PP. We need quite a bit of PP. Oh, I forgot about this as well. Oh my goodness, my apologies. Let's grab whatever gives us more daily political power. Thank you. Modernize FM Elo Alfk. I know that's not how you pronounce it, but whatever. A bigger military means a better military, right? Because I'm just looking at the manpower right now. Three quarters of a million, that's, that's a lot, so. Advice heights? Um, we're going to lose more PP. Treating wounds, band aid. An enemy to freedom. Well, if you worry about that one, please go right ahead. As well, sending the Wehrmacht. Please go right ahead. But an enemy to all prosperity. Well, I don't want to do that one yet, just because it hurts our PP. Uh, anything else here that does... Oh, me to get with the leadership. If you worry about this one, please go right ahead, because I just want to get some PP immediately first. Just so we can take it. Because we won't be able to get through the entire focus tree here. But we'll get through enough of things that we'll be able to get most of the stuff that's super, super important to get done. Obviously, or maybe not obviously, but when I played as the fully reformist... Uh, God dang, it's French time. Fully reformist Speer. I didn't do Italy or Japan because I've heard that those are the weakest paths. So, it is what it is. But, yeah, another round begins. Good. Uh, wow. That's a lot of PP we don't have. Should not have invested so much into Indonesia. 2 to 4. Thank you. Not bad. And we're at 6.2. Not bad. Pretty good, actually. Keep building, everyone. Keep building. You're doing a great job. I consider in the last video. The title of the last video. This is really 100% conservative. Like, with the challenges that we have, I'm going to throw my head in the wall probably. And hopefully not complain too much. <laughs> Information of the sock intern. Very cool. Good luck with that. And getting that extra PP will be helpful. The American question. With the uh, Republican Democrats in power, the U.S. has taken a decisively hostile attitude towards us. If we truly want to achieve a breakthrough, we'll need to work hard for it. The only question is how much we're willing to pay, of course. The likes of Minister Schmidt presses for large concessions, but even the Fuhrer, despite his reluctance to humiliate Germany, as he calls it, understands the need for an end to the embargo. However, he may veto the entire operation should the American kind of ask for too much. That one immediately first. That one's more important. We'll get through this stuff eventually, but I do want to continue knocking this stuff down. So that'll be good. Thank you, that is done. Siemens, oh, I'd love to dismantle them, but we're getting closer. We're definitely getting closer here. Do we not? Oh, we don't have, have enough PP for this anyways. Let's wait to get a 25 up there. And over here, we definitely gotta do this middle one. Yeah, since we have command power anyways, just going to do that one for now, it's fine. The American question, very good. Now we can lose more PP, the right approach. Um, yeah, if you want to read about treating wounds, please go ahead. And boom, yay. Since we have the PP now, I'm gonna go and spend it uh, on something like this. Oh, we gotta wait for a month, probably, right? Ah, that's good. I wanna give it a little bit more time, because this is a, a cooldown, doesn't it? So, and we're gonna have to lose PP anyways, but it's best if we just kinda wait for now. All right, Band-Aid. Perhaps some of the madness can be reversed. Oh, we lose some stability. That is not ideal. That is not good. But limitless potential. 
We lose. Oh, we lose more political power. Oh, let's wait. Um, efforts against Aji Fabin will increase in strength. Good. Aji Fabin mi are mighty enough that a head-on offensive could backfire with severe consequences. The crimes are beyond counting, but we must hold our anger at bay, bide our time, and devise a safe plan of attack. Despite our moral duty to those who suffer under Ab's yoke, our attacks must be focused on Aji Fabin itself. They are deep enough in illegal activities that it would be easy to start digging up dirt on them. Any and all evidence of wrongdoing should be recorded and stockpiled so that we can begin a campaign of litigation against middle management, executives, and the company itself followed up with attacks from the flank. The Reich Nox uh, Richtendienst has been a useful asset so far, but has mostly concerned itself dealing with Herr Speer's political foes. While necessary to secure a position, I believe it is time for our dear friend Herr Galen to redirect his efforts towards cooperation. Thankfully, the Fuhrer is a mind with... A, with myself, and Galen has a vested interest in seeing his backroom rivals destroyed. It will be child's play to bring down the corporations once the R&D is unleashed. It is an open secret that OBS and his cronies have enormous amounts of illicit funds, offshore accounts and investments in enterprises of dubious legality. OBS always thought himself above the Gestapo and was correct to do so, but he hasn't yet reckoned with Galen and the young vessel, the most talented and ruthless operatives we are blessed with. R.G. Fobbin's paper trail is miles long and spattered with blood, easy to follow, and more incriminating than we'd ever hope it to be. Insertion Eric walked into the entrance room of his apartment building. There was nothing much, really. All of it, sofas, coffee tables, lampstands, and lamps were drowned in dull, worn-out colors, and a receptionist's table rose out of the primordial banality to greet him. The man behind it might as well be wearing camouflage. The ends of his hairs were tinted in silver, and dusty-looking glasses hung precariously from his nose. The anteroom's neon, neon yellow reflected lum luminously on his balding head. You have a guest. Herr Schmidt, the receptionist said, Sir? Eric's name was not Schmidt, nor was it Johann for that matter. Nodding his head as he passed by the old man, Eric entered the left before it creaked to life after he pressed his floor. He heard the receptionist whisper, Nice to see you back from the forest, you prick. Patience, Fisher, no need to blow one's cover. When he reached his apartment, he found that it had been unlocked. Stupid receptionist, reaching for a sidearm with his, within his coat pockets, he entered the room. Herr Fischer. The figure of Gerhard Vessel greeted him. You don't mind a co-worker's visit to your humble abode, do you? Before Fischer could reply, Vessel waved them off. No need for the games of masquerade. I know your name. It's pointless. It was a strangest thing. Vessel was Galen's point man. Why was he here? No disrespect meant, sir, Fischer said. It's not right sinking by the minute, but what are you doing here? I am only here on a brief visit, Herr Fischer. Simply put, I have a proposition for you. An assignment. We believe that you are the most qualified to do so. Do tell, Fischer's voice was cold as ice. Enthusiastic, are we? The Fuhrer is having problems with the corporations, you know which. Fisher nodded. We offer you two choices. Infiltrate the slave camps. The vessel's fingers stilled Fisher's complaints. I was so sure that you had reservations. I have an alternative available. Infiltrate Aji Fabin's headquarters. Oh, you can forsake my protection and walk away. The choice is yours. Fisher considers his blood. I never asked for this. A hollow echo. I'll take the HQ briefing. I'll take the camps. Mm. Camps? HQ sounds like a lot of fun. I really want to do HQ, but camps... Because here, we all love camps, don't we? But right now, we've just finished up attack from the flank, and we're still out of political power, which does suck. But oh well, it is what it is, right? The right approach? Why not? Our preliminary talks have yielded only partial results. While the Americans have accepted to partially lift their embargo on our economy, they also handed us a detailed list of reforms they want to see done, before we can start discussing any kind of diplomatic thaw or even worse, economic cooperation. This will surely enrage the conservatives throughout the Reich. Of course, our big daddy didn't take the news well at all right now. He and Reich's Minister Schmidt are discussing, or to be more precise, arguing in the Reich's council to lie, and only one can prevail. Though our leader intends he has indeed has the power to impose his will upon his minister, and doing so will not only mean keeping the embargo as it is, but... Also antagonizing Schmidt, something which could have dire consequences on the long run for the Reich's diplomatic effort. Now, like I said before, like I apparently we're like losing regime stability, which kind of sucks. But uh, if things go really poorly, like my goal here is to go through as many of the uh, paths for Speer as possible, just so we can see like everything that he can do for the most part. I'm gonna try. I might have to use consequences to show you guys everything here, but I just want to make sure that you know. I show you what we can, the conservative, the extreme conservative, the extreme reformist, and the middle ground too. So, here, we're looking pretty good. We have to lose some PP right now. Uh, this stuff is okay, the Encore Manpower Regime Stability will go down, segregation, in inevitable. Um, we don't, we're not going to choose that one. Firm chain. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, but we do need more political power, so screw it, let's just do a limitless potential. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Which we lose some more political power, which does suck, but... It is what it is but briefing, holding his pencil between his thumb, middle, and index fingers. Eric played with it. He spun it in his hand, letting his long and slender body insert itself to the various gaps between his fingers. 
His eyes set off into the darkness and the distance, and he paid no attention to the briefing. Eric was a single agent there. The room was plain and dull, but that was understandable. Rows and rows of white, atlas, and stock metal desks and chairs, only with one attendant present. A white boy with a map of Munibits was before him. Hey, hail Fisher, the briefing instructor said. Annoyed by Fisher's antics, are you paying any attention? He was the same as the receptionist in his hotel. Grang, boring bureaucrats, and an endless waiting line for something to do. The Reich's Aryan hierarchy seemed to be an environment where men like these could live, thrive even, as opposed to the blonde, beautifully, or eternally youthful, and blue-eyed models seen in the countless propaganda posters. Eric had seen his share of those. He would tell you that none of it was accurate. I've been there, Eric said. Done that. Why don't we make a deal, Herr Instructor? He leaned forward on one hand, putting his pencil down. You tell me what to do straight to the point. That way we can get our jobs done without much more contact with one another. I seem to get some rise out of the man. Deal, but under one condition, he said. He held his index finger up as to emphasize the point he was making. I don't hold any responsibility. I got into the job knowing the risks, sir. I will not be a field agent otherwise. Ignoring Eric, the man proceeded. You want to infiltrate the Monobet's slave camps and gather intelligence as before. With one twist, the man pointed on the map. With pointless irony, once you're in there, you'll be contacted by an R&D element within the camps. He will give you the equipment to proceed to your second task. Sabotage your camp and provide suitable conditions for the R&D to trigger a slave revolt there. Sounds easy enough. I appreciate your sarcastic wit. Herr Vessel gives you a leeway to choose your moment. When will it be? Give me a month. Also, right now, we, don't, we literally don't have enough political power to, like, do this stuff, which kind of sucks, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I'd like to get more PP and such, but, uh, political power gain, 4%. Uh, is it worth doing? I might want to save my PP to get that one done. Maybe we'll see. We're at 99. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for to see if they'll do anything here. Oh, that's that one. For oh, crap, that sucks. Oh, boy. Mm, we could have won this one. I might replay this then. Mm, we'll have to wait and see. Ooh, planning rebellion. What are they up to? The black back alley of the Kripstrasse in Frankfurt was a damp and dingy place at night. Rarely visited or checked by any other passing guards, flanked by four wings of the local corrupt factory, each producing their own variant of metalworks, it was a perfect place for meetings of the more secretive kind, indeed. It was this exact reason why the man silently stood against the wall, waiting for his comrades to join him. One by one, they made their way out of the blocks they called home, sneaking over to the same wall and avoiding the lazy flashlight beams that occasionally flicked down the road. When the last conspirator, a man of slim frame, squeezed out of the hole in the wall of his barracks and slid over to the wall, the first man blew a sigh of relief. He was the one that the first man had prayed would return, so Erasmus, how do they respond? Wing A is ready, they're practically jumping in the bit to go now. The second man barely held a laugh of glee. Holy crap, it's really all coming together. I never thought I'd see the day where we grew balls and went after the Germans. It's a gosh darn miracle, Mayaka, Maikaika, Ta, said the third man, a faint smile crossing his lips. Out of all the men, he had been a slave for the longest, toiling for years for his machines and tools away, always at the mercies of the Nazis. Finally, the slaves were taking back some control. Jan, you wanted to be the one to start the fight, didn't you? Asked the first to the third. Jan's smile widened again. Mikhail, you don't even have to ask. I'd start it myself with or without you. Then it's settled, Mikhail straightened himself up, shifting his uncomfortable slave uniform around. Tell your friends we're going in three days. We'll overpower the guards, capture the factory, and get out. And then Nikita asks, and then Mikhail continued, we're free. What are they up to? Yeah, maybe we'll continue doing that. That really sucks, my bad. I should have realized that. A crash, a uh, shot, and a revolt. Um, I think I've already read this one before. Um, yeah. Yeah, I read this one before. So if you like to do this, please go ahead. Cool. The revolution has begun. That really sucks up here. But we still have a chance to do well here. And we lost most of our political power, which sucks. Uh, future in their hands. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Boom. 82%. And how is the intelligence agency? Good. More weekly stability, please. Thank you very much. Digging in. All right. The siege begins. Very, very good. One thing here we can really do. Not yet. Not yet. The inevitable. Yeah, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. No need to worry about hypotheticals. Another drink, Helmut. Okay, so now we're stuck here, and we've done everything we can. Can we get more political power? Courtesy call. A fatherland first. A lesson to morality. Hmm. Stability, our change ways. This is more reformist side. So maybe we'll come back and do this side when we want to go more of the dangus route. So that'd be kind of cool. Schmidt in a land down under. A trade agreement with the Swiss. Easing tensions. How far should we go? Regime stability does go up a little bit. Schmidt's mission. Unwanted holiday. We could do this stuff. Axis of old. Wouldn't touch Hitler. Wow, that looks really bad. The Führer's assurance. Wow, that is... Oh, we can do this one. Oh, look at that. That's, that's kind of nice. Repatriation efforts will be enhanced. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. There we go. 21 days. Not bad. Not great. But not bad. Zero. Oh, boy. That's not good. Oh boy, yeah, if we don't do well here, then I'll, I'll definitely make sure we do well, uh, you know, before. Oh, 3.2 billion, no, no, no everyday patrol. Alright, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. 
Oh, it was more critical power. What else is new? What else is new? You know? Anything down here? Yes and yes. The market for reform. Good Germans would never fall for such nonsense. Oh boy. Oh boy, boy, boy. Emergency meeting. Alright, it's Shauna. Shauna's plan. Alright, thank you very much. Four and zero. Zunkov's music. I just wish we had political power. That's weird. We, well, I guess we're doing... Yeah, I should have invested in political power. I wanted to just metal Siemens, but actually, let's come back and see that. Shauna's plan. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Oh, my bad. Uh, we definitely want to do this one first. Can get rid and dismantle Siemens. But, please close it out of that. Thank you. Very well. Speak, Herr Speidel. 1.72 every day is pretty, actually, pretty bad. That's pretty bad, actually. Uh, second descent into heck. Well, once again, Eric found himself riding the train that would carry him to the depths of heck. He'd never seen a carriage pack so full to the brim before. Well, he had, once upon a time. A few months ago, the scent of sweat had formed a layer of briny smell, sickly sweet and saltily bitter. Eric had once passed an eternity in here, but thankfully he had a place to sit his time. Others were not so lucky. Some collapsed under the heat of a hundred bodies pressed together like sardines. Eric knew that some had died. Inside the cramped, damp, and dark atmosphere of the carriage, he drew a picture of Monovitz. From memory, there were his pens, a guard barracks, and finally the chemical plant. An eternity would pass, but he held on to the picture like a man clinging on to driftwood amid a shipwreck. Soon, so soon. The carriage halted, its tires screeching as it entered its port. Its doors slid open with full force, and early morning light poured into the gloom. Those who had survived the journey filed out, carrying whatever their fate had spared them to have. Eric's possessions were not much. Papers and some clothes, just enough to get a skilled laborer permit into the more humane portions of the camp. Not that that was much to speak of. The guards, ca uh, camp's guards, assembled them into two groups, one for men and one for women. Then they lined up, and an officer sorted them both both ends into skilled and manual labor. Ahead in Eric's queue, a man dressed in the most opulent uniform possible in this place flicked his fingers. Left, 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 right. Eric had learned the stories of where the left side had, had led to. He shuddered. He hoped his papers were enough. When Eric's turn came, the man's fingers flicked right. Eric had never breathed a greater sigh of relief. Next were the showers, a comparatively more relaxing place to go, for all intents and purposes. Eric's old life had vanished, and only darkness awaited him. Will he make it out alive? In Shabbat's plan, if you want to about that, please go ahead. Yeah, she went to the floor's yours. Let's improve poverty, my friends. On the path of liberty, the gods of Monovitz treated skilled slaves with little more respect than manual ones. For example, Eric did not have to huddle and sleep in pens contained hundreds and thousands even of slaves. He had a cell of his own. He was supposed to bunk up with nine or ten more slaves, but his companions never arrived. It was either fate or the R&D's intervention. It could be both, really. For the first few weeks, Eric worked under the alias of one Herr Hermann Dach. A supposed specialist on the operations of the chemical tools they used here, of course. Eric knew jack about the details of his work. Then again, he would never have been a field agent if not for his expertise in the arts of mimicry. Hachi Fabin did not go easy on his slaves. Returning to his cell, he threw his body into the thin slice of mattress they called beds and slept. When he woke up in the middle of the night, he found sever served on a platter. An enormous piece of bread. Eric's mouth watered, but its purpose was probably both as a meal and a signal to commence the operation. He tore into it, piece by piece, not wasting anything. Not even the crumbs. At last, he found a key in a map. Stopping his sir felt or sir fate of ravenous appetite, he put the rusty iron key to the platter and unfolded the map. It was small, barely the size of Eric's two hands put next to each other. It was enough. Drawing Monovitz's floor plan from memory, he correlated the X on the map with a secluded corner of the yard. It turned the browning, barely consistent piece of paper over to see if he had some more information on it. You have 45 minutes, P. Eric made for the prison cell door as quickly as he could. A single ray of hope. A house demands lack income tax. If you want to that, please go ahead. Political reform is not possible without economic reform. The Reich's industries depend on this money. Earhart is a very stubborn man, whether he will listen is doubtful. Agent of Chaos. Oh boy. This is getting interesting about Eric. I like reading this story. Good or bad, it's interesting. Um, anything here? Do, 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 do. All right, and then we get this one here as well. And then we have. Oh, if you want to read about the story of the Reich, please go ahead. The Silver Tongue. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. Eric made it to the yard in less than 15 minutes. There, there, he found the place deserted. The eyes of the gods averted from his presence. Eric was, for all intents and purposes, invisible. Sneaking his way through a cordon of armed patrols, he reached his destination. The X mark glowed like a single speck of starlight on the map of Monovets within his mind. When he reached it, he dug with his hands. The dirt seemed surprisingly loose, crumbling readily to his grasp. In a minute, he found a black backpack buried under all those refuse. The R&D did not abandon him. He was relieved the last time they sent him deep undercover. They did not give him anything. Eric had to perform on-site procurement for practically everything that he had needed. 
He was in a hurry to extend his sleigh at Edmund and Ob's personal slave labor camp, unzipping the bag expectantly. He appeared to see what the treasures lay with him. Eric found a tiddly, uh, tidy, tiddly, tidily, folded uniform closely matching those worn by the demons of this man-made hell. A pistol with a silencer accompanied a black or belt stuck with a few magazines, a bolt cutter was in there as well. In a few seconds, the bag had transformed him from the fortunate but ill him and Doc to the most dangerous agents of the R&D. A handwritten note at the bottom of the bag said, 240 minutes. It would have to do. Donning the uniform, gun, and equipment, Eric Fisher set out in the best agent Andy ever has had. His destination, the slave pen's freedom, awaits. Schmidt's proposal, you want to build up? Please go ahead. Do what you must. Uh, we must be martyr, Herr Spider. We'll do what you can. We must be true to ourselves, Herr Schmidt. Do what you will. Um, I don't know, man. We must be strong, Herr Shona. Do what you must. Shona is the man with the correct plan. Wow, that's going to suck for us. We're gonna, yeah, we're definitely going to be losing. Who's this? Is this France? Uh, I think it is France. Could be wrong about that. Yeah, French genocide in, in Syria. Unleashing hell, Eric. He made his way to the slave pens, his bolt clutter hanging in his bag, true to this context word. There were no guards that threatened to intervene in his mission. It was all quiet, the yards and halls quiet, save for a few of one of its stats. A staff. It did not mean that Eric could relax, however. His contact had given him time and it was swiftly passing by. Eric had to be quick about it. In a camp so large as Monovitz, there was bound to be a lot of slave pens. Sabotaging one might be easy, but dozens of them would prove to be quite the task. Rows upon rows of identical brown barracks stretched out in front of him. Eric had reached his quarry. Before him was shabby figures shambling in the dark. In the shadows, laden by exhaustion and fatigue, their silhouettes made pity rise in Eric's heart. After all, he had been here before. His ribs poked out from his uniform, an eternal reminder of what, had gun, what he had undergone in the name of the Reich. Unpacking his equipment near one of the brown buildings, he set to work. Taking out his bolt cutter, he set to do, it, uh, to do his task. Eric looked at his watch with a little luck and an elbow grease, as Americans say he'd be alright. He closed his eyes and hoped for the best, as we invest in education here for the Reich. Pretty good. Anything down here? And Russia. Anything here in Russia? No. Oh, here. Oh, Gehilfe? We can wait. Friedenslaufe? Eric has demands, flat income tax, perhaps there's method to his madness. No, they cannot know the magnitude of my mistakes. Eric has a very simple man. Well, he, so am I. <laughs> if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Erhard, get out of here. Define me again, I'll have you shot. Erhard's threat is not to be taken lightly. His resignation will destroy the government. C'est la vie. <laughs> Like I said, extreme conservative. A juncture in Inferno. Eric sat down by the broken lock. He had succeeded in his first tasking. Wiping the sweat from his brow, Eric let his rapid breathing settle down and looked at his watch. There was still time. His contact was good, very good. He didn't know how P managed to distract the tormentors of his heck long enough to let him do the R and D's dirty work. Perhaps, whoever, beyond the notes, had once been an intelligence officer themselves. Their work certainly showed prowess and a penitent for executing dangerous gambits with verve and panache. His lungs crafted the puff of a cigarette. It had been too long. A week? A month, perhaps? Eric's mind had lost any semblance of time that had gone within the camp. From dawn till dusk was work, work, work. Those places were not used for labor alone, but also for extermination. He did not believe in the racial theories spat out by the likes of bureaucrats and politicians. If they had spoken the truth, there would be no need for institutions such as these. There were no nobility in slavery. If the fear had not been playing or paying Eric's paycheck, he too can F off. The time had come for a decision. The briefing had outlined the goals that Eric needed to pursue in his time working within the camp. He could follow that directive, but he could make a run for it, and no one would blame him. With the guards done, slipping away did not seem hard. Eric looked for at his watch. Time was ticking away. It was now or never. Go to the guards section. Do what we must. Oh, man. Oh, look at this. I, I definitely read this one. The room, which only a second ago was nearly bursting, now flipped to uncomfortable silence. Speer became keenly aware of the stares of disbelief, rage, and disappointment that bored into them, or into him. The only noise now was the crackling of the telephone. Speer could even imagine Shorna staring into his receiver in shock. Of course, my fear was all that Shorna said before the line went dead with a loud click. Immediately, total chaos consumed the room, quickly rerouting into the rerouted into the lightning round of pure rage that was Helmut Schmidt. You gosh darn madman! You just killed two hundred innocent souls, you heartless dude! What sort of reformist are you? Free the slaves, huh? I didn't realize you meant freeing them from the effing mortal coil. You will show respect to my decisions, Herr Schmidt. I am still your fear. Speer rose from his chair in anger. Schmidt refused to sit down despite the word taps on his thigh by kissing him. You shut the bad word up. Oh, bad word! You shut the heck up, you two face rat. What will the people think? What will the international community think? Did you put an iota of thought into this before you chose death for hundreds? Herr Schmidt, you shall not insult me. You shall certainly not tell me to shut up. I couldn't care less what you say, Kissinger shoved Schmidt hard. And the man caught himself. 
Breathing deeply, Schmidt paused for a moment. His voice strained against his restraint as he continued. I would think it would be best if I retired for the night. With that, Schmidt left the room. The rest of the gang closely followed, stopped in only to glare at Speer undoubtedly holding their tongues. Herr Spado, I think I made the right call. You must understand. The Herr can't think we're going too far, and the conservatives would shred me if I didn't. Speer tried off. Spado said nothing. Instead, briskly turning and exiting, leaving Speer to reflect on his own decisions, one must be forceful in their actions. It is what it is. And Erhard resigns. Goodbye. Speer sat in his lavish office. The last rays of the sun were coming through the tall windows, and many delights of the Wellhauptstadt. Germani began to flicker on. There was a decadent uh, decanter of brandy on the luxuriously lacquered desk which the Fuhrer was willingly partaking in. Erhard had announced his resignation earlier that day. Even if Speer wanted to stop him he couldn't, going, he couldn't have had. And why would he? He had defied every order he had given him. Still, the man had been good at his job. Schmidt and Kiesinger had apparently retired for the day, and somehow Albert didn't think they would be far behind him. He couldn't have... Have Erhard killed not now, and without them, he'd always been an outlier in the party. Hitler had chilted him while he did build his little sphere, but without him, he relied on men like Tresco to keep the army happy, or Erhard to fix his bloody mess that it was his right. Now he was alone. Why do all the good people leave? All progress down the drain, and Germany's hopes and dreams with it. Hopes crumble. Oh well. Things happen. And we can do anything about that. That sucks. The God Barracks. Threading his way through the quiet and still yard of the God Barracks. Eric was struck by the hygiene of the palace, or the place. Here, the fifth, the filth that had plagued the workers' residence, skilled or not, was absent. Whoever solitary guard he encountered dressed well, their evil permeating through that clean fabric and cloth they wore. Eric felt out of this place did not belong here. A spot of order and sanitation within the bowels of the most inhumane organ of the Reich. While well, he stood here, awestruck by the first signs of civilization after months or was it weeks of captivity. A greeting came from somewhere ahead. Good evening, someone said, an innocuous phrase that shot tendrils of surprise and shock through Eric's spine. At least he did not look out of place, and his disguise worked. Returning the greeting, he strode out of view as quickly as he could. Eric was not there to test his luck. His next ordeal would require every ounce of subterfuge that he possessed within his bones, and he was not about to waste it to the indiscretion of these people. The ammo storage was his objective. Peace, help, where the patrols would not have... Uh, Avail him here. He was alone, and the uniform was a thin line that separated him from discovering danger. His clammy skin clung to it desperately, holding on for dear life. The time had come to test the value of the R&D's investment into its equipment. Let's just hope it succeeds. Let's hope so. Hope crumbles. Speer's stomach dropped into a pit. They all can't be gone. Why would they be? The secretary looked lost and more than a little afraid. The offices are all cleared out. Their homes, too. The Bohemian Opel reported seeing Schmidt in Prague this morning, but nothing more. Herr Galen has suggested that they fled the country after he cleared his throat after the direction your last conversation took. Speer could hardly force himself to speak. You are dismissed, he mumbled. As the secretary left his office, the enormity of the blow struck the fear like a hammer in the gut. The gang of four was no more. Just like that, they had walked away from his grand project, from the promise of a better future for the Reich. There would be no more economic reform, no more charming NSDAP, no more keeping the Wehrmacht in line, and no more hope for the positive relations with with the rest of the world. It didn't seem real. Surely it couldn't end like this. His phone rang, startling out of his, his fugue state. He paused for a moment before lifting the receiver to his ear and steadying his voice. Hello? Mein Führer, came the gravely condescending voice of him and Josef Abd. I hear you need some assistance with your economic policy. If I might be so bold, myself and some particularly eminent national socialists have a proposal for you. God help me. What have we done? We had a good time. And it looks like we have been cooed. Yes. The silver tongue. Oh. Silver tongue. I think I've already read this before, so. Cool. We can begin as soon as possible. Kissing a smile, of course, my fear. After all, there's no better time to do what must be done now. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read this one before, so. Yeah. And now we've been cooed, pretty much. Ammo cache. Well, all that keeps talking about the story here. I like this one, so. As he had expected, the ammo cache of Monovitz was immune to the influence that the contact had exerted. Here, there was no langour, no lapse in attention on the parts of the guards. There was no lack of firearms on the site. The solitary guards that Eric encountered before he had handguns, but here they spotted sported rifles and submachine guns. Above, a sniper pushed on a tower beaming with a spotlight ready to pick off anyone that came near. Eric may have a handgun, some clips, and a city hand, but frontal assault can only lead to a single end, death. Seeing out of the sources of light, he reconnoitred the ammo storage. Perhaps more information would help. The guards here would be more dis discerning than the ones he had passed by on his way here. It would be awkward with the two guards at the front if they saw through his disguise. There were no telling if they would let him go or shoot at him. Eric would need to trust in the R&D's preparations to go past undetected. He did not wish to trust them, owing to the incident a few months ago, but he would have to, to make it out there alive. And a third path was open to him, however. He could, instead of following the R&D's directive, leave. No one would blame him for his sense of self-preservation. He completed one of his objectives anyway, so his choice towered over him. As the spotlight came uh, came close to highlighting the position to advance or withdraw. Well, we'll see what happens with him in advance. So this is still going on. This is weird. 
cool and I, I obviously like because of this is happening um i'm gonna go ahead and like go back into an earlier save and kind of uh rework things just a little bit so the invasion it's been almost a day since the siege had begun uh yeah and with no end of the standoff my Kaita watched from the factory window as his fighters patrol the barricades, weapons, and him. It had been a very busy 24 hours, but it was certainly some of the most exciting of his entire life. He noticed Mikhail coming up as well and sighed at the loss of his peace. Mikhail had been jumping the entire time, pacing the factory for hours. What's up, my, uh, my Kaita? asked Mikhail. He said nothing, instead lighting his cigarette. My Kaita waited for a moment for a response. It's not that something's happening, it's just nothing's happening. No negotiation, no infiltration, they're just waiting for something Mikhail exhaled. It was at that moment when an explosion rocked the barricade in front, sending men flying across the compound. In an instant, all was chaos. Gunfire filled the streets as the Wehrmacht soldiers, dressed in full battle gear, charged the factory. The slaves, slaves put up a fight, and both Mikhail and Mikaita saw their fair share of Wehrmacht soldiers fall, but any hope of the attack being repulsed ended with, le with a, when a leopard, machine guns, spitting lead, rolled over the remains of the barricade, and its guns blasted a high explosive shell directly into Wing A, blowing apart the flimsy walls of the factory like a house of cards being hit with a sledgehammer. My Kaita, I think this is the end, Mikhail said quietly, as more and more vehicles began to overrun the factory. My Kaita was silent for a minute, watching the end of his dreams. Well, the revolt had ended not as he hoped, but as he expected. Now, all that was left to go out in as much of a blaze of glory as they could. Tauraz must execute the hostages, all of them. Performance German government collapses. Very cool. Following a sudden cool, sudden <laughs> rate of silence, and the closure of several recently establish international contact points between the world and greater German Reich. International observers have drawn together a bleak picture of the nation with the scar, scarce sources left to them. Führer Abelschberg's government, most widely known to be staffed with the so-called Gang of Four, a group of influential reformists in the Reich who allied or aligned with the Führer in the days before the Germans of the war had collapsed. In its place now stands the government of staff with NSDAP reactionaries led by Theodor Oberlander. Führer Speer has not been seen since the restrictions first started. Russia should, in an official public statement, relayed by the Reich's Chancellor that all is well, the whereabouts of the former government members are unknown versen verloren and that is technically supposed to be the end i want to finish off eric's story first before we do anything else and uh yeah i don't see this actually complete so this is when you get basically cooed i think this happens this happens as well when you get down to less than 30 percent regime stability something like that so but midnight midnight noon the two guards unslung their rifles when they saw Eric step into the light. It wasn't going well. Where's your identification? They shouted. Where are your papers? Eric was compromised. He cursed an R&D as he thumbed the silenced pistol holstered on his hip. The uniform did not pass muster, and he hoped to the lore that this gun's firing mechanism would not jam on him. The ammo cache shrunk as the feasibility of reaching it grew smaller and smaller. His first instinct was to make a run for it. A stupid notion. The rifle and submachine gun can nail him at this distance without much effort. He only had one way, one path to survival. Like on the American Westerns he loved so much, his hands must be nimble and his fingers ready on the trigger. He drew his gun and fired. The first shot caught the rifle guard on his eye, sending him spazzing to the ground lifeless. The second round found the submachine, guns, submachine gunners hot, halting him on the tracks as he slowly collapsed to the ground, drowning in a pool of his own blood. Before Eric could re revel at the work of his reflexes and skill, however, a gunshot rang out from the tower. A bullet whizzed past his head, kicking up dirt, dust and dirt behind him. Firing whatever ammo he had left in his pistol at the sniper, Eric broke into a run. Tonight would be a lively night to say the least. Now it's time to find a way out. It was said uh, to get things done in politics, one often had to reach across the aisle. Thankfully, the laws of the Reich had meant that Oberland had never dealt with much opposition in the Reichstag. It had seemed a blessing at times, but it meant that he did not have as much experience in manufacturing backdoor dealings as he would have liked. Now, however, the Reich was facing the biggest crisis since the West Russian War. The madman had declared war on the slaves. It was exactly what the president feared. Oberlander was not certain that anyone with half a brain believed a thousand dead Germans and ten thousand martyred Untermenschen would achieve. It would certainly not bring about a great Reich, and thus that goal was left up to Oberlander, Wegener, and Tretner. No one else survives, a mass of man whom Oberlander had grown to despise the very look of, tr ah, the trio. President Oberlander, Ve Wegener, or Wegener, yeah, here tells me that we have something to speak about. Oberlander could imagine the disdain was mutual even, even if Arbs did not show it. The last time they'd spoken, Archie Farben was being ripped to bits by Speer with Oberlander's help. I'm a very busy man, and time is money after all. Oberlander hesitated, glancing at his associates, and Tretner gave him a nod. There was no going back now, even if the step was the most difficult of all to justify in Oberlander's head. The doctor turned back to Arbs, who had begun to light a cigar. What a booty! Herr Arbs, Oberlander ventured, how would you like to be the most powerful banker in the world once more. He liked the sound of it. A new gang of four. Interesting. Interesting. Paul Wegener. Oberlander. Ja, Abs. Oh, Banker and Thorn. Oh, Bankers. An after action report. Um, yeah. The room seemed to fit the mood of those inside it very well, dark and cold. Speer sat behind his desk. The gang sat in their assorted chairs and spattles stood. All of them sat in uncomfortable silence processing the news they'd heard. 
Well, Herr Spadel, you have the numbers correct. Schmidt took the liberty of starting the conversation, obviously not wanting to let Speer control what was said. Spadel stood uncomfortably at being prompted by Schmidt, clearly catching onto Schmidt's plan, but went ahead anyways. Numbers are incomplete, uh, but we currently have about 191 slaves confirmed deceased, with about 100 more in custody with various wounds. Them are casualties are about 35 confirmed KIA, with one armored car disabled, hit by a Zidanev. 62 have reported wounds, mostly minor bruises and scratches, and out of the estimated 70 hostages they were holding, how many do we recover? Spado paused, hesitating to read the result, finally spoke up, none. So that makes, what, about 300 dead? 300 innocent souls lost, incredible. If only there was some other way we could have gone about this operation. Speer spoke up firmly. Helmut, we've gone over this. I'm not going to. Helmut raised his voice over Speer's. If we only could have negotiated or taken any other means of attack that wasn't rolling a bad word tank over them. Herr Schmidt, I'm warning you. Speer raised his voice in return. Schmidt ignored him, but instead raising his voice to a near yell. But no, this was clearly the right choice. Right, 300 dead, but... Herr Schmidt, you are dismissed from this meeting, Speer yelled angrily, and the room fell silent again. Surely, Schmidt packed his folders and left, and the gang quickly followed. Spado left out a few seconds afterwards, leaving Speer to reflect on those actions. Schmidt's words rang through over his head and over and over and over. And let it happen again in the future? Hmm? Maybe should have sent in, uh, what was it, the GSG-9 or whatever potential prototype they have for, you know, special forces, if they have any. But chance encounter with a chemical plant. Eric strode down the road that led to an inner parts of Monovitz. A few weeks ago, he had traversed his way inside, not knowing whether or not he would emerge on the other side of Levin. Well, yet, he did. The weeks passed by in his mind, as befriending his fellow skilled slave laborers and whiling away or willing away the hours spent in pain and exhaustion with nothing but a spirit that refused to die here. Eric's memories seized him, and he stopped in his tracks, trying to push it all away. Mind if it was something personal. Eric had not wanted to go there, not at all. However, he was sure the R&D would not protect him from his enemies or even try to assassinate him. Eric was sure of it. He had accomplished whatever he was sent here to do to facilitate a slave uprising in Lomonovitz camp as best as he could. Yet he stared at the looming, bulbous chemical plant that threatened to swallow the whole eastern side of the camp. What he had done, sabotaging the locks and rigging the arms cash to blow, was in the name of his necessity. This one was personal. If he could only make it in, Eric's one remaining explosive would ensure that whatever volatile chemicals inside would burn the plant down. He only needed to decide whether or not to do so. It was risky, but perhaps it was worth a try. That's worth a try, I suppose. They go big or go home, the student's response. It started out as a trickle. State media, of course, would not be covering a, such a stunning thing as a revolt, slave revolt in the full detail, instead framing it as minor unrest. So the information was passed through word of mouth. Telephones around Germany rang with the tales of gunshots, tanks, and machine guns rattling off, leading to many universities across the Reich becoming glued to their phones. In Frankfurt itself, students watched from their windows as tanks after tank rolled over university avenues and roads. It soon became apparent what they were here to do. The massacre they had been ignored by the press, but it certainly was ignored by the people. The telephone lines from Frankfurt nearly jammed with the sheer volume of calls sent across the Reich and university from Cologne to Königsberg. The youth of Germany held uns heard uncensored, unfiltered accounts of chaos and death directly caused by the government they had supported and trusted. The reaction to the news was one that one would expect. Within two hours, spontaneous protests had erupted across any city with a major university in it, grinding the streets to a halt. Within three hours, the protests were riots and the police was backed up by whatever half forces were on hand. Within five hours, the streets were lit by the flames of burnt-out cars and broken zidanums, and the air was choked with tear gas and smoke. Within eight hours, the streets were empty once more, leaving those who had cleared them to pick up the pieces. One thing was clear, though. The student's faith in Speer had shattered, and it was doubtful he could ever regain it. Was it all a lie? Well, that's what slaves do. That's why you probably don't want slavery. But, Studenten Bewegungsbereich, Queen B. Ah, first, Agents Mozart, Beethoven, and Bach. After observing f Fearbrand, or Firebrand, both inside and outside of rallies, the team has gathered sufficient data on the subject in addition to her undeniable charisma. Firebrand expertly uses groups of students to prepare the ground for rallies as soon as the government refuses her requests. Dozens of agitators bring the news to the other students, exaggerating the events in order to spark outrage at the denial of what are presented as sensible requests. From there, it's easy for the suspect to turn the outrage into a large retinue for rallies. Brushed Bay, Agents New and Alton. Update on Brushed A. Following Team Music's work, the Bureau's experts on crowd control and psychological warfare devised a key weakness of such a wide and decentralized web of connections. With normal formal controls over the news, it would be easy for, to leak false information and spread the wrong news among the student masses. Vorschlag, disrupt flow of information, isolate leader, arrest firebrand, amateur leaders will only face failure. Return to Baltaki. Another folder was unceremoniously dumped onto Albert's desk, another death warrant to sign, another treaty to withdraw from another thing he was expected not to read but simply apply his rubber stamp. He decided to access the little rebellion for once and put his reading glasses on. 
A quick s skim reveal precisely why his party comrades would prefer he never see the document. In the interest of national security, all ports would be closed to ships from outside the Reich indefinitely. It seemed the party disagreed with the rejection of Autaki. That dirty word they began using more as a propaganda piece than anything. He looked at his desk, a cup of coffee. That would soon become much more expensive if it could even be found in a legitimate market. His desk itself had been a gift from a Japanese dignitary carved from a single piece of ebony grown in the jungles of Indonesia, no more fancy tropical woods. He looked about at the room he sat in his office in the Vauxhall of his greatest creation. Every block of stone, every light fixture, every scrap of wire in the walls and piece of pipe in the floors had been mined here in the Reich. He had no idea how many slaves were buried in his foundations. I think things might be about to get worse. Hey, but the favorite of conquest is done. And we have no focus here, but, you know, whatever. Things happen when you get cooed. Well, sort of cooed. Sort of. Sort of. Closing the ports. Now the only goods that would get past in this port were those of the Reich. Iron and coal, grain and chattel, both human and animal. No more Japanese computers or types or tires. No Italian oil or automobiles. No American money or metal. They would get by. That much was true. Perhaps that's what they would call them. The get by Fuhrer. The camera flashed again, his grip tightened on the rail. Another one of Hitler's vainglorious dreams gone wrong. And he was stuck dealing with the aftermath as usual. The photographer moved closer, so he could practically smell the dude. A uh, niggling feeling back in his head reminded him of all those days spent at the Berghof and raptured by Hitler's ideas. He'd done his best to temper the man, hadn't he, or he had spent his time climbing the ranks? The camera flashed and Speer's temper broke. With a wordless snarl, he snapped it out of the man's hand to the cobbles below. There was some fuses fuss to be dealt with by his staff. They'd probably buy him a new camera to shut him up. He ignored the commotion he had caused and stared it out to the sea. When was the last, when was the right moment to listen to my conscience? I never felt like before. <laughs> Not bad, though. The Le Legends of Frankfurt. The newspaper sailed over the barbed wire on the wall with ease, falling to the ground outside the slave barracks with a quiet thud. The early morning mist had dampened the paper somewhat, but it didn't matter to Maltes, who reached out of a crack in his window to pick it up, sliding it into the cold barrack before slamming the window shut again. As he pulled the rubber band off the roll, he could only thank God that one of his friends had managed to strike a deal with a group of sympathetic students. It had let him and his fellow bunkmates stay informed of a luxury that many fellow workers did not possess. As his friends gathered around him, he flipped through the first pages. It was his standard news, mostly until he hit the fourth page. There, in the center of the page, one block of text was circled in the black marker. The title read, Minor Unrest in Frankfurt's Factories, but the words written down in the marker screamed, Successful Slave Revolt Put Down By Here. Holy crap, a slave revolt? I never thought I'd see the day, said one man looking behind him. Cries, it says they put him down. Wonder what that looked like. I said another, Brave and my first, a lot of them. Wish we could rise up like that, said a third. My toys remained silent. Slowly he rose. Facing his friends. You see this? This is the proof that we can overcome our so-called masters. The slaves in Frankfurt had enough of the whip and of the baton, and they rose up. And you know what? They succeeded. They may have been put down, but they took over their factories. These men are the first to challenge the Germans, but they will certainly not be the last. He took a deep breath. The men, men hanging on to every word. And heck, if they revolted against the guards and succeeded, why can't we? Sounds like there's going to be a lot of death. Valkyrie. The staffers followed, and most of them as useless as they were decorated. OKW meetings were more than likely to kill them out of boredom than any enemy action was, and most of them were glad of it. Then Speer could see more of a few buttons close to bursting on the immaculate shirts, festooned with medals. One would think that Goring look would have gone out of fashion by now. He allowed himself a chuckle and turned to relay his joke to the Feld Marshal von Trusco to his right. The old Prussian was sweating out, but I'd never seen that before. The Vauxhall was famously freezing, a subject even he was not too proud to joke about. There was an odd look on his face. Speer ignored the gentle nudge from Oberlander, who sat to his left, then continued studying von Trusco. Oberlander in turn ignored Speer, as he was so wont to do these days, and called the meeting to order himself. There was a briefcase in the general field marshal's lap. He kept toying with the handle as though he was afraid it would leap from his grasp. Henning's eyes, which previously had been vacantly staring at his feet, rose to meet his fears. Oh, Valkyrie. Oberlander continued his vacuous speech, but Speer felt deaf. He stood in the room, followed his example in confusion. Henning, too, rose, holding the briefcase to his chest like his life depended on it. Protests arose until eventually all fell silent. I stood by for some time now, Henning began. I've hoped things would change. I hope you would change. Now that everyone else is gone, his eyes remained locked on Albert's. I see that I was a fool. One of those staffers Speer had joked to himself about seeming to have an inkling of what was occurring. He slowly uh, sidled towards uh, Von Trusco staying behind him. Speer opened his mouth to say something, what he would never know, but the staffer struck at Henning, grabbing at the briefcase. The generals yelled and leapt behind the desk, but Albert was paralyzed. The pair were tussling like animals, the staffer staring at Henning's face, and then the Feld Marshal Von Trusco exploded. Breathing, searing, agony. Kaboom. <laughs> oh man, kaboom, kaboom. Ah, uh, Valkyrie. Ah, uh, Valkyrie. Very cool.
Ghosts never leave, but not but a bolt. He was assaulted by bright lights, burning pain, and loud voices. He was later told he'd been unconscious over a day while they removed the fragments of wood and metal that had become the atmosphere in that brief second. The room he now rested in was empty without windows. A pair of guards waited outside his door, and the rest of his hospital was presumably filled to bursting with them. The staff who had saved his life had mercifully perished in the initial moments of the explosion. Several of his generals were not so lucky. He would have to give out some posthumous uh, medals later, he supposed. He couldn't remember the names of the staff, for no one ever told him. General Feld Marshal Valchesco had been obliterated. Much of the debris flying through the room had been, in fact, been him. Albert reached to his collarbone where a small wound lay. They sent him through the x-ray to identify anything they'd missed, and identified the tiny fragment of the bone that lay underneath, too small to dig out without risking more damage. They weren't able to identify to which man it belonged. There would be a purge, naturally. He had thought that they had moved past those times, but heads would roll regardless of what he thought. From what he'd been told, Trusco had made a few allies in his plan, the last gasp of a foolish traitor, they called it. Most likely, they wouldn't let him attend an OKW meeting again, no doubt. Oberlander would snap up the opportunity to represent him. Another empty hour to fill his day. Another hour to think about what was. There was nobody who cared about his feelings anymore. He could order someone to listen, but all of his guards, assistants, staff were more loyal to the party than to the Fuhrer, and eventually every word he spoke would be transcribed and studied by those who claimed to obey him. There he didn't seem to be much to be much for Fuhrer to do so, so should be a cried. Do you who do you turn to when you have when you have murdered your friends? Uh oh fig dish ish veda nish tun vas du me sachs. And then a meeting with the Gauletes of Osmark. Finally, there will be medals given to the Staatspolizei officers who dealt so well with the riot in Bremen. The Reich Minister Oberlander sat down the paper and looked up. The Fuhrer was looking at him like something he had found, uh, he had found on the underside of the shoe. A riot? They chained themselves to a gate. You of all people should know how dangerous those students can be, Albert. The officer showed remarkable restraint. I'm told one of the rioters will recover, he insisted, pushing the pen and paper towards Speer. Medals are only appropriate. Schmerz snorted a humorous laugh. This time he did not even look at Oberlander. He seemed to be staring a thousand yards ahead, deeply unnerving the minister across the table. No, I don't think they are. Try tell them I'm tired. Tell them they're murderers. Tell them to F off for all I care. He slumped back in his seat. Oberlander took and Speer, a shell of a man, great bags rusted under his eyes, contrasting the pale skin that almost seemed to hang from his bones. His suit clearly hadn't been ironed and seemed to almost have shrunk into it. He had lost weight, always slim. He always now seemed closer to a skeleton. He'd hoped the man would be able to maintain a shred of dignity, but apparently he had to do everything around here. He gestured to the guards at the door. You heard the Fuhrer is tired. Escort him to his chambers until he's well rested enough to perform his duties. The medal ceremony can be postponed until then. The guards moved to help Speer from his chair, but before they could reach him, he flung his hands up and stood, giving Oberlander a withering look. Like the moment before a lightning strike, hairs on his back of the neck stood throughout the room. The corner of the Fuhrer's mouth twitched, but Oberlander did not shift his eyes, locked with Speer, as he could see there was nothing left within. It had better be a dawn fast ceremony. Look at that. Burgundian system. Otto Behrman. Who is that? Oh, Schrock and Osbeck. Very nice. I'm going to be using... So what happens to Eric? Or Student Bewegungsbericht. Escalation. Bericht A. Agent, agents Bedelicious Gazette and Buch. Operation success. By sending out agents masquerading as Firebrand's envoys, we spread false information about an even larger rally where Firebrand herself will deliver a new and even larger request list. Among the demands are contained several points which con constitute a criminal offense. Chief among them, her immediate appointment as Prime Minister of a new democratic government. Firebrand was unable to deny the rumors, and I will now be forced to f either lose face in front of the movement or accept the false list and escape attention. Bericht A. Agents Mozart, Beethoven, and Bach, Operation Success, following Team Alex Vak, are agents of intercepted communications concerning the organization of the Apple Mansion Rally. Therefore, Firebrand will be forced to personally list a request. As soon as the words leave her mouth, the Opal will intervene and arrest her for sedition. The manifestation is due two weeks and a half from today. All we need to do now is wait. Vorschlacht, arrest Firebrand. Not even a queen is immune to her people's wishes. Absolutely not. I have a feeling this is, uh, doesn't even matter at this point, so. Fresh blood! Um, huh. Well, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely read that one before. Rubber stamping fear. Albert wasn't there. He was handing out medals, certainly, but that was not where he was. This was an action that required no mental effort, no decision, and D was not granted any decision. This was no different to stamping papers on his desk, a pin medal on his chest. Thank you for the service to the Reich. Handshake, step left, repeat. The monotone voice was unnerving them. He could tell. He did not care. He did not seem to care that much anymore. He hadn't eaten in a day or two, he reflected. Perhaps that was why he felt so detached. His menu was the last thing they would allow him to control over. Was he refusing to order it from out of spite, guilt, and machism? Masochism? He wasn't quite sure. That warm Oberlander, treating him like a child having a tantrum. He could have had him shot on a whim, didn't he know? 
could have, everything he was a could have or was these days. He briefly entertained himself with the image of Oberlander lying in a ditch with a hole in his skull. He'd seen enough men like that in the past few years. This time he allowed himself a brief smile as he shook hands, vanishing just as quickly as it appeared. It seemed to be worrying the officer even more. He stepped once again, extending his hand to pin a medal on another man, who wasn't there before realizing he had reached the end of the line. He turned about face without hesitation and began walking towards his waiting car. Right Minister Oberlander observed Speer from his own car. He turned to Otto, who seemed just as worried as he did about the fear of state, though perhaps for different reasons, as Speer's god Otto's concern was admirable, though his empathy was a little concerned at Theodor. Make sure he eats, force feed him with porridge if you have to, I don't give a darn. If he dies, I shall hold you responsible, Otto. Fraternizing with the enemy. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you wonder about this, please go right ahead, yeah. One does not talk with their president, or do they? And so the Third Reich. He was in the fear bunker today. His ministers had evidently decided it was too dangerous for him to remain above for either him or them. The latest in a long line of peaceful protesters had apparently become tired of being beaten with an inch of their lives or an even inch beyond. They demanded to know why the fear had allied to them. Why this government stripped them away the freedoms of the same ambitious youth who had fought so hard for them. Why those same men who had fought against now occupied such privileged positions? To be honest, Albert didn't blame his ministers for keeping him out of the hearing range of these students. He wasn't quite sure what had happened either. A return to form, he supposed. Students never had been fond of him until he started capitalizing on them, and if anyone in the party saved Hitler in his heyday. The benefit of being surrounded by men in black is your own shade of gray appears sparkling white. Students hate military men, propagandists, and politicians, so he had played the architect. The sensible one, the only sane man, he had admit hard. Yet now the men with the guns were his, the post was all bore his face, and it was his speeches that the Reichstag clapped for at countless minutes. Still, everyone was knee-deep in crap. But perhaps he had remembered too late. When did he join? When he was the first captivated by Hitler's magnetism? When he was a student. What had changed since he actually seemed to be in charge? He seemed to spend every day wondering how he'd arrived in the situation, yet every day went on to bed none the wiser. For so long he had believed it was he, he that knew how things worked, not that vile Oslock Ballman or that arrogant opportunistic dude Goring. He had Hitler's ear, did that not mean something? Yet every year he realized more and more just how little that made him. He couldn't hear any of his violence being above being perpetrated in his name, so he pretended it wasn't happening. I hope the books all is still there when it come out. An unexpected development. A Gerhard Vessel stood like a scolded student in front of his teacher's desk. Beside or behind the ornate piece of furniture, however, was someone much more dangerous than a teacher. Reinhard Galen looked at his best subordinate with a mixture of anger and disappointment. Agent Favletz Katzia, he began, and Vessel had contained himself from frowning at his cover name. Why did Galen insist on such practices? If not for Sir Pierre's unquestionable ability to espionage and for his own loyalty to the man who had taught him everything, Vessel would have long since resigned. Agent Favletz Katzia. The head of the army repeated, I am greatly disappointed. I had strongly suggested you focus on the Antifa movement, and what do I see? He pointed to the folder on his desk. You openly disregard my suggestions to insist waste time and resources we don't have on students? Agent Kalanaf Mooks as the reply, I had thought. You do not think you, Agent Vefles, catch and obey. My suggestion was a polite way to say order, but it seems like you lack the intellectual qualities needed to understand simple, such a simple notion. The effort was not to reply to a superior was evident on Vessel's face, but he was in no position to complain. This was an order and he was a being subordinate. The operation is cancelled at Vefleshe's Katchen. You will await for the orders and refrain from taking any action, is that clear? Yes it is, came the heavy reply. Then you may go. Vessel saluted and left the room without another word. We were so close. Why, why, why? Because we could. Because there's a lot of paths here and we want to see them. All. Or at least as many as we can. Germanian Psycho. My pain is constant and sharp, and I do not hope for a better world for anyone. In fact, I want my pain to be inflicted on others. I want no one to escape, but even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. I am inside my head again. I turned to the minister, reading his notes. Not that I can remember his name. He was saying something about death warrants. I'll probably have to sign them later, no doubt. It would be someone I know, someone with too many good ideas, making too much noise. I attend meetings like this in Hitler's day. I didn't care for them then. I don't know, though, not for the same reason, but back then I was too busy daydreaming of plans of building un or building buildings unbuilt. I know I'm daydreaming now, but again for a different reason. People believed in me, but who am I? An architect? A warlord? A dictator? All these and more. I have made excuses every day, pretending to myself he did not see, and I did not know, but I knew what was going on and did not care. Rise higher and throw more people beneath your boots, and perhaps then you can make a change. Then my ego taken over. Why am I surrounded by killers, liars, men of such arrogance? Surely I can do better in these trying times than these lunatics. Now I'm Hitler, and I seem to be the only one who knows. I recall the first time I witnessed a speech from the paradoxical man. I'd expected swastikas, brown shirts, roaring, and dem demagoguery. I've been met with by the opposite, a man in an inexpensive suit sharing his worries about this country he loved. He had mentioned the Jews, of course, but only in passing, and minutes of bankers rather than blood. 
Goebbels have been different. A frothing mess, a roaring crowd, a repulsive spectacle. Yet I still joined. I was not choosing the NSDAP, but becoming a follower of Hitler. I told myself, I hear taking hold of me before I grasped what was happening. I believe for many years. Now I realize that being in a position to know, nevertheless, shedding knowledge creates direct responsibility for the consequences. This is not an exit. The exit ability to exit uh, passed by us a long time ago. Hopefully, the, these guys don't do anything here, here too. But we'll see what happens. Oh, look who deserves Very good. Meeting with Obbs. Unfortunately, him and Yosef Obbs still prefer to deal with Shpia personally still. It was an opportunity to get out of the Vokasal where the walls had ears, and Obbs had enough uh, to pull to ensure true privacy. Albus sipped his coffee and picked out the selection of smoked meats on the table before him. This will be much appreciated to return to normalcy. Frankly, I had been my doubts about the coterie of yours from the beginning, but naturally it was not my business. Eh, Albert Schnolted, everything was Ob's business. Well, they seemed better than the alternative. I seem to recall you had plenty to say about them when they were infringing on your business. Far be it for me to tell you how you run your operations, however. Spear had remarkably become a more interesting conversationalist since his gang had up and fled. Ob supposed he needed a chance to vent, and he admitted he enjoyed their verbal sparring on some level, while Albert might no longer be willing to influence he once did. He was an excellent messenger. Be far be it. Nonetheless, we are expanding our operations in Bayern this month. New factories, accommodation, you know the sort of. There are a few documents required to expedite the process, of course. If they end up being at the top of the pile, the benefits could be passed along. He raised an eyebrow pointedly. I suppose there is no point arguing at this point. This is extremely conservative. Can we actually dismantle stuff still? That's kind of funny, but we still could. Or humorous. Maybe not funny, but humorous. A new wave of slaves. Since Shpia's ascension, the numbers of involuntary workers in the Reich had stagnated. Too much pushback to get rid of the institution. Too much incompetence and corruption to keep it. Now that those subversive reformist elements have been eliminated, Shpia's government could refocus itself on efficient slave management. And Vaterland. Poles who did not officially exist are being dragged from the beds. In Ukraine, members of a once proud Cossack host are surprised at their clandestine meeting by a squad of drunken Wehrmacht soldiers being beaten to unconsciousness before being sold for the under the table cash. In Russia, six children of famine racked villages are exchanged for an underfed pig or crate of chickens. The first major slave expansion in 20 years has taken place. Arbeit macht frei. How long is this going to go on? Like, is there, is there content? Oh! We got rid of about eight, nine million slaves so far. Wow. Say what you will, but that's not too bad, actually. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Knowledge is power, and that much we understood. It seemed that all his gaulers understood it as well. He had clearly not grasped that the exchange of information was not a zero-sum game. A concept spared lifted from the works of a German enjoying the freedoms of America. As little trading is essential, be it resources or knowledge, still. Far be it from him to tell the people what to do. Albert glumly signed the papers on his desk one more, once more. He spoken with these few contacts in the intelligence community he still believed trustworthy. They, too, had done their best to express their doubts. Hardliners would be hardliners, though. No information other than state official communications would be allowed to skip the Reich, and in turn, no foreign Communications could be permitted in. Sedition and treason roar everywhere these days, and so he heard. He turned his radio up. Some American band he would likely never hear again. Receiving foreign radio was a crime now, don't you know? If he wanted a record, he'd have to barter with one of the staff for it, something like a Breton smuggler. Still, it was better than the alternative of only listening to proud Aryan music. God, he was fed up with Wagner. If I had to hear Ride of the Valkyries one more time, well, then listen to the Ring Cycle. Something like that. Oh, just on an Isolde. There are other works by uh, Wagner than that. Oh. Sorry, I just, I'm here with my cat. I, I forgot Pinky was in here. Bing, bing. The next Reich's Marshal was rare to get to attend OKW meetings after the incident, but this one had been deemed essential. The guard had been triple, the building locked down, and the courtyards prepared for the parade of the six wheeled Mercedes that never seemed to go out of fashion despite taking more maintenance than a tiger. Still, Albert reflected as he looked upon his new Reich's Marshal, perhaps he was just projecting onto the car the faults of his owner. Speer had done his best to keep Schoen away from high echelons of Germany, but the decision was now out of his hands. The monster in uniform had another feather in his cap, and his clique were following in an nest. The worst thing was the look in his eyes when he was shaking the dude's hand, pure, unfettered pride. Now he would all be forced to deal with his unique management style. Albert examined the agenda, expansion of Wehrmacht funding, increased recruitment efforts, military research and development, budget tripled, preferential contracts to IG Fab and Dalma Bands, Reichswerk of the Old Guard, unrepentant reaction to his recent reforms, he sighed, leaned back in his chair, and prepared for a long opening speech. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh, we need literally a single point to win this one. Then again, I mean, I'm probably going to go back in time and actually just fix this up for us anyway, so... Since uh, this part of uh, 
the campaign is not going to last too long. How I learned to stop worrying and I love the bomb. How about certainly pr appreciate the aesthetics of excess? That much could be gleaned from studying any of his buildings. Still, all things must have a function, and he was hard-pressed to find the function of this place. The Reich had invested a great deal into thermal or nuclear energy, but this plant produced practically none. Still, the reactor thrummed away, atoms crashing and splitting with one end product, plutonium. They had accumulated uranium aplenty from the conquest in Russia and Africa, but that volatile and vital component in nuclear weapons was needed now more than ever, or so he was told. Fizzle material production had ramped up in response to the Reich's recent demand that their weapon stockpile be doubled in size to appropriately operate as a deterrent. Speer did not see the difference. One city killing bomb will kill as many as a hundred if there are no more cities to become. To his new ministers, it seemed an economic stimulus, allowing for greater expansion within those old, proud companies that dominate heavy industry and big science. To Sean, it was another opportunity to swing his way to make room for himself. To him, it was a waste. There would be no economic recovery if there was no people to recover it. And if Sean got his way, there would be, no, there would be all the room in the world. Uranium breeds plutonium. Paranoia breeds violence. Pretty much. Uh, I don't do this one, too. Can we still get rid of this? Probably not. Actually, at this point, I don't think we can get rid of it, but higher than the Alps. It had been a long time since Albert had been to Austria. Bowman had rather spoiled the atmosphere of the Berghof with his tasteless rec decorating, and Albert had been more focused on his own products than renovating yet another of Hitler's houses. Still, the state business never ended, and it wasn't like there was much outside the Reich to visit anymore. This was admittedly one of the better views he'd seen in his travels, however. The crunch of boots on snow was outlining the figures of the officer offered him. How the heck they hauled this many tanks up here, he'd never know. The normal, the dark, stark, white slopes of the Alps seemed carpeted in Felgrau, tents beyond number. On the higher slopes, he noted mortar positions, do subtle dots of sniper nests, flat cannon ready to repel any plane that dared to stray too close to the gun-toting obelisk they inhabited. Unfortunately for Albert, it had been a bumpy ride in the truck with some stern-faced falschemegas followed by a hike that had left his knee weak. No helicopter could reach his rare field level there. He waved his hand to the binocular-toting secretary and raised a pair to his eyes. The Italians, too occupied a spot in the clouds, scant kilometers away across tank traps, minefields, check hedgehogs, and enough bobbed wide and closed os Paris. He'd seen the reports. Things were escalating here. More equipment, more men, bigger planes. OKW demanded all of it, and he got it. He just prayed there would be no spark li to light the fuse. The Arizona would look like a toddler's scrap. Cool. Oh, we got rid of Burgundian system here, huh? Unbekannt, unbekannt. Oh, various leaders. Huh. And Helmut Schmidt. He's still here? Alright, and next event. Please. Another runner in the night. Well, he should have seen it coming in hindsight. The gang of reformers that had gathered around himself, so often attempting to assert their own will in place of his own ceasing their bleeding for one blessed moment. He'd welcomed it. He wasn't quite sure what the final straw had been. There seemed to have been so much debate between them and all in the smoky halls of Vauxhalla. All he knew was that when their receptive secretaries made their morning calls, Herr Kiesinger, Erhard Schmidt, and their families were not there, they had searched naturally and found themselves at the end of a trail that they could have been in years of them planning one last rat line. In the event they didn't get their way, he raged at first. It was rare time he let his temper get the better of him. But that night was the first in a month of furious tantrums against a gang of three with their conspiracies. Against the Reich, he had worked so hard to fix crumbling before his eyes that himself, most of all, however, he was afraid. He could feel the shocks circling. There were others, less and less members of the party that believed themselves most suitable for the task than he, and he was too dangerous to be left alive. He was wrong. Oberlund had neutered him, had shoved his hand up his ass, and was now controlling him like a ventriloquist dummy. No more allies meant no more spare, now that the ones alive were likely suing, stunning themselves in America. All too eager to leave the Reich behind, we remain. I'll be honest here, like, no matter what you do, with, with this route and the full reformist route, spoiler, you're a puppet no matter what. It feels like you're just a puppet. There's nothing you can do. You're destined to be a puppet. Damanactio memore. It was all too easy to forget a person ever existed. We are only so much as a mock that we leave on this world. Albert reflected on his living room. Margaret was out of somewhere. Not that they pay one much in attention these days. It was all too easy to simply spend the evening gazing into the fire, flick a piece of paper in the and watch it wither and curl. He had almost forgotten his book. It didn't do have to do with the traitors in the former ranks of such esteemed men as his current cabinet, so they'd been removed. Every piece of paper they'd signed was redacted. Every law they signed could be repealed, for it was a sabotage. Even their homes had been demolished, and the mention of their names had been forbidden from any form of media. It didn't bear saying what had happened to their housekeeping staff. In America, no doubt, they would be telling tales of their daring snub to the Reich. But there was no news of the escape would ever run. People might ask what had happened to the ministers, but they would never get the answer, and eventually they would reach their own conclusions. He returned to his book. Who the heck was Herostratus? But hey, the schooling. It's going up, man. It's going up rapidly. <laughs> Whoa. Samara and... Well, I think Samara's going to win. This should be defense. It's easy to blame someone, something on someone who isn't there. Like a fart in an elevator blaming someone to whoever left last. Therefore, the logical thing to do is to blame every problem on the recent departures. There's enormous economic downturn. It wasn't me. Tell your inf turn your information over. It wasn't me. Our government is losing power and install security cameras. It wasn't me. 
Indeed, to the party it seemed like it was all too little Alba had done. It was only natural someone else would take the reins, if only as a guiding hand. It seemed denying culpability. Only get you so far. The propaganda continued, however. The gang of four had been spies, infiltrators on the highest order. Perhaps in a way it was true. It certainly had been a blunder of the highest order. Shifting the blame is much easier than taking it. That is very, very true. Hmm. And there goes the Aryan Brotherhood. Juice. I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Collective responsibility had been something he had taken very seriously while he had, so had some weight to throw around. While the Fuhrer made the decision, everyone agreed it was the best decision. As such, all the awful treasonous ideas of that clique of traitors would be collectively agreed to be eliminated. Only this time the shoe that was on the other foot. It was his own minister so eagerly dictating the removal of their predecessor's ideals. While Abbott agreed with a few of these in principle, he mostly disagreed with the gusto with which his ministers went about their business without consulting him. Shapiro had always done his best to portray himself as a benevolent type of dictator, but that was becoming all the more difficult when his minister's approach had shifted from velvet glove to iron gauntlet. The people had liked his new breed of more civil ministers, especially the students who had put him in this building in the first place. But God, if he didn't miss their beckering. He was certainly reminded of it enough by the power of documents he had plowed through to eliminate the subversive influence. Another law revoked stamp. Another plan cancelled stamp. Another protection removed stamp. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. This is a long while to get right to the end of the uh, Shapir stuff. But at least it's content, man. Uh, like, there's still stuff going on. Yeah, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, and dog too. Thank you. Coffee with Kissinger. Naturally, his subversive former friends were being monitored closely. Once the Reich's sharpest men had been made aware the trail existed, they reached the other end with a mere hop of the Atlantic. Albert had con contemplated having them eliminated, but decided against it. The open motive former government officials claiming asylum was too brazen by half. They were instead watched from a distance, and Albert received reports on their activities every single day. Every single day. He recalled the mornings he had spent with Kissinger, a cup of coffee and a shop debate. Cut had always been the earliest or easiest of them to deal with, the most realistic. Those talks have been spirited but never been exasperated him nearly so much as a windbag air hard. He had always seemed to have the right words to get what he wanted, and Speer would observe him running circles around him just as often as the other two. Albert sipped his coffee and flicked through the report. Kissinger had been talking to the Americans, of course, who knew, who knew for how long for him. Every day he met with the CIA agents, who were presumably digging for every scrap of info about Speer and his new government. Cut would have had them hanging on every word for as long as he desired. It was always his talent. But hey, how about that GDP? Not bad. Enemy aircraft downed. Um, how badly do they want it back? Oh, cool. Smoking with Schmidt. Schmidt was confusing. He'd been de deferential, polite, capable. At first, his only flaw had been smoking. It actually had increased the cleaning budget to deal with the buildup on the ceilings, but as time went on, something beneath was revealed. Schmidt did not like many of the people he worked with. He did not like many of the policies his government had. He seemed to dislike the Reich as an institution. Now, of course, Speer knew that it was exactly the case. Schmidt was as a subversive, probably in the league with the Reich's banner before he was forced to make his escape. While Ehad maintained himself by mooching off economists of his hot host nation, and Kissinger was feeding the government information on a slow drip, Schmidt was openly denouncing his birth country, writing his tale of memoirs. The informants in his house had managed to acquire a photograph of a page for a pursuit. Inside the Third Reich was a uniquely unflattering picture of Speer and his management, and alluded to many things Albert would have rather kept under wraps. All shall be revealed. I'm sorry about that, I just clicked that naturally, just because we get through that pretty quickly as well, so. At this point, I'm just trying to get through the events. Just to see what, like, if anything else happens. 10-10, that's pretty nice. America sees photos, great! Economics with Ehad. Ehad had been the most annoying of them all. Filled with a filled a seat, like Goring. Talk like he was Bismarck and smoked like a Don Chimney. Certainly, Speer's management of the economy had not been miraculous, but the way Ehad had talked like it, he wanted to tear it up by the roots and made his blood boil. Now he was extolling the virtues of his own miraculous economic system which would have saved the Reich from every darning flood had real or imagined. The Americans were eating it up by the sounds of it. His insights were being hailed as one of the best looks into the German system in decades. He apparently acquired his own coterie of continental-style economists. Let him have the inter interminable naysayer. At least he could finally get a meeting done without having to open a window. You won't be missed. Hey, look, we actually won the one. Nice. We're still doing okay here, so. Church reactionaries. Actually, that doesn't make sense for us to do, but we'll do it anyways. Uh, reparation chaos. A fallen stereotype of the German people is our penitent for efficiency and order, stretching back to the heir of the Frederick, Frederick the Great and beyond. Of course, we know better than that. The national socialist regime is driven with internal strife, corruption, overlapping responsibilities, and red tape. While well, the Führer has done his best to clean up this mess and reorganize the whole Reich's bureaucracy, it is an uphill struggle, even in brand new structures like the Reich's slave reparation system. Created from the ground up for a noble cause, there have been problems. But this one in particular has caught everyone's attention. A dozen civil servants in the reparation program have been accused of corruption, kickbacks, and other measures, despite previously stellar records. 
Not only that, but a fire on these three offices set within a week of each other, and Frankfurt, Essen, and Rostock have destroyed thousands of files related to many slaves, casting them adrift into the Byzantine system. The scandal and fire, along with many other misplaced papers and orders, has cast a dark shadow over the whole program. It's too suspicious and coordinated to be merely accidental or co coincidental, but we've been unable to uncover any proof that there is such a plot to wreak havoc within our attempts to reform the economy. In order to fix this, please fill out forms AH829 and JI315 in triplicate. I'll be honest, like, if this keeps going on, I gotta end the episode then. I might have to split this up. Like, this is getting a bit extreme. This is getting really extreme. Like, just say we've been cooed, for the love of God. Just say we've been cooed. Oh, there goes England. Oh, and there goes Wales. Alright, well, if that's it, I mean, if, if that's not it... I mean, I'll probably look at this again. I mean, we can't do anything here anymore. Oh, oh wait. What? Wait, we can do stuff against... We can't do this one. Can we do this stuff? That doesn't make any sense to me. But okay. There you go. You can do that. You can't do anything up to here on Siemens. It's weird, but okay. Yeah, I guess this is done. I guess we're done here because there's literally nothing else. The campaign ended, of course. Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess if there's more stuff, maybe I'll bring it up. But honestly... This is lasting a lot longer than I intended it for to. Like, I thought we'd get, like, cooed immediately. Obviously, there's nothing we can do with the focus. But I think this should be it. So now, because we... that Going the extreme, like, the extreme, extreme, extreme conservative route by firing, opening fire on the slaves. Obviously, we've entered the failsafe. Um, or, you know, the side that we can't really do too much with. So, now I'm going to go back. And we'll go back to more of a middle ground reformist. And I'll try to do as many routes as I possibly can. Um, while well, trying to be kind of the middle ground to the best of my ability. But, if you enjoyed this longest video, long, or really just long video, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, uh, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys watching up until the end of this video, I really do. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow in another take for Spaz Campaign. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.